So I just got back from Brussels, Belgium, and it is Christmas in Brussels already. And it was amazing. So let me walk you through what Christmas time is like there while everybody's gearing up for the Christmas holiday. Hey guys, it's Wendy Valencia. Yes, I just got back from a whirlwind trip to Brussels, Belgium, and I loved it. It was amazing. So I wanted to walk you through what goes on around the town there in preparation for Christmas. From what I understand all over Europe, they have these amazing little Christmas markets and Belgium is definitely on the list of cool places to go at Christmas time because they set up these little wooden chalets all over the, the downtown center of the city and you can go from one to one and they sell items, they sell food, and they sell the most amazing drink called Glühwein, which from what I understand just means hot wine, but it's like mulled wine. And oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how amazing it is to get this little glass of hot wine and it's freezing cold outside and to walk around from store to store or little chalet to chalet, checking out what they have to offer. It is amazing. And we went everywhere. In Grand Place, they have their national Christmas tree and it's this beautifully lit blue light Christmas tree and it looks so natural and it's just really, really lovely. Um, it's completely different than the national Christmas tree here in the United States, which is a Christmas tree that has like a, almost like a fence around it and the lights are hung grid style on the fence. So it's not a natural shaped Christmas tree. This is legit a Christmas tree with lights strung on it. There's no real order or system to it, but it looks lovely. And then we had dinner in that square area there in the Grand Place. And at, um, I think it's every hour on the hour, they have a music and light show and it is beautiful. I'm not gonna play all of it for you, but just so you get an idea of what it is. If only I spoke French, I would know what they were saying. And then they also have a Ferris wheel. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I've never, ever, ever been scared of heights in my life. But the night we chose to go on the Ferris wheel was so windy. And our, our, our little cart was just swinging and I was looking down and I was like, I, I don't wanna die. It was really beautiful. And so fortunately for us, we got to walk around in the evening on most evenings. We didn't have to work in the evening, which was really good because it took me like three days to get my body shifted over right about the time I got shifted over to their, their time. It was time to come home. We got to go out in the evening and we had mussels. I'm not a huge fan of mussels though. I like all seafood except mussels. I did not realize mussels were like the national food of Belgium, but every single restaurant has mussels. It's really kind of cool, but they were actually completely different from mussels in the United States and they were really wonderful. And what was super interesting to me about the food is they don't cook with any salt. And it made me realize how much salt we have in our food in the United States. And I feel like if I had stayed there for maybe two weeks, I could have broken myself of the salt habit. And so that was actually kind of hard to get used to. I had the most amazing caprese salad. The cheese was incredible. I mean, truly, truly, truly incredible. So, but I missed the salt. 
and they don't put salt on the table there in most restaurants. And then they have waffle places because, you know, Belgium, it's it's actually a thing. I thought it was just, you know, that's the kind of waffle. I never really considered the fact that it actually comes from Belgium. And so they had these Belgian waffles everywhere and they make them with fruit and chocolate and sprinkles and whipped cream and they do not taste like regular waffles here in the United States. Our Belgian waffles are not sweet. These are sweet. They have like a coating of sugar on them and they're really delicious, but I only allowed myself to have just a little tiny bit of one. So it was just a lovely trip, but I will tell you, I missed my family terribly. I, since I have had Melina, I don't particularly feel the need to travel like I used to for work. I used to travel all over the United States, but anymore, I, I just don't feel compelled to go anywhere. I'm happy to do it if they need me to go somewhere, but I don't volunteer for trips like I used to because I want to be at home with Melina. And I actually had like a cathartic moment while I was sitting on the Ferris wheel I realized that I am really, really fortunate to be able to have these experiences, but having to choose between being a mom and my work life is really difficult. But I know that I am showing Melina how to be a strong female and, and to be a leader and to go after what she wants and don't let things stand in your way. And I'm proud of myself for that because sometimes it's really hard to be a mom and a boss at the same time. But I know I'm making the right decision because she is going to be super strong. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya. We're out. <laughs>